Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. I'm John. And this is really special. Today we're going to be showing you how to build the first of our Master Series. And this is an F4 Your Corsair. Something that we never dreamed would be even possible. And it was designed by this amazing individual here, John. Uh, John, what's some of the experiences that people are going to have in building a Master Series airplane? On this particular airplane, you're going to be doing a lot of curves. So you can see the wings here, got a nice smooth surface. The fuselage, again, is nice and rounded. There's going to be a lot of stuff that you've already done like here on the tail section, but on the main wings and the fuselage, you're going to see some new stuff. That's awesome. Now, John not only designed a whole different way of working with foam, but those techniques are going to carry from plane to plane. So don't be intimidated by this. Follow along just like it's your first build, first time working with foam. And don't think just because you're a new pilot that this is an advanced flyer. These still fly just as easy as planes before. And as always, we're going to be giving you free plans, or you can choose to support us by going to our store, getting speed build kits and the need electronics. Now, this plane is a swappable, and it will fly off of a power pack C. We're coming out with our new radial motor line, and if you choose that radial line, you're going to have three cell and four cell capabilities, which is going to give us a wide envelope of speed and performance. Let's get our materials in order, and we'll get started. The first thing we're going to do are the wings. Um, I've popped everything out, and I've got everything laid out. And it's best to go ahead and inventory everything before you get started. So what I've got here is I've got the upper wing skin, Part two of the upper wing skin, the lower wing skin. You're gonna have two spars made out of foam, and then two spars made out of wood, and then over here, everything's mirrored. You're also gonna have a wing tip on either side. These are the spacers. You'll have two for two large on each side, two small on each side. These are the servo doublers. Make sure you've got everything before you get started. Where I like to start, is on the top of the wing. So I'm gonna move everything off to the side. And you can start by peeling this layer off. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an airfoil shape. And the way that's done is I bring it to the edge of the table and I'm, I have a firm pressure with my right hand, I'm dragging it down with my left. And what's happening is, is I'm crushing the underside of this foam. And you can already see that I've got a very slight airfoil foam. So I'm just dragging it down. And I've only begun crushing the foam from here to here. So each time I drag it down, I move my hand over just a little bit. until I get all the way to the end of the wing. So now we've got a nice smooth shape. Getting the right pressure is critical. In order to figure out exactly how much pressure you need to apply when making an airfoil, you can take a piece of scrap that you've torn one side off and you put it on the edge of a table and you put just a light to medium hand pressure and you're, you know you've got the right pressure when you've got a small indention. If you're not using enough pressure you're still going to be able to form that airfoil it's just going to take a little bit longer. If you're pressing too hard instead of having a nice smooth airfoil it's you're just going to have a bunch of flats formed it just won't be quite as smooth. It'll still fly fine it just won't look quite as good. All right, so the next step is start putting these spars together. There's a long one and there's a short one. The long one is the front, the short one goes in the back. There's also a foam spar. The front foam spar has two tabs. What I'm gonna start out by doing is getting these foam spars glued to the wooden ones. Starting with the, the front one. Everything will line up very nicely. And I'm using quite a bit of glue. Do the same in the back. I'm going to go ahead and form up the other side. 
and everything again will line up very very neatly and do the same on the front one these are the spacers what I'm going to start out by doing is just gluing these two together use quite a bit of glue kind of move it around so I've got the one spacer formed and I'm going to now mirror the other side I'm going to do the little ones and then I'm going to mirror that Now I'm going to add the spacers. There's a little knockout here and here, right at the low spot of the wing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue one here and one here. We're going to start with our longer spar and we're going to glue our spacers to it. You'll notice that the doublers are facing the center. We're also going to do that on the outer ones. Be sure and allow about 45 seconds for the glue to cool before going on to the next step. Got the tab on the outside and the doubler is towards the center. And one other thing to note is the rounded area goes up the same as this rounded area. And same on this outer one. I'm going to glue this outer spacer on with the doubler pointing to the center. So you can see here we've got the tab on the outside and the doubler is towards the center. Again, the top will be slightly rounded, the bottom will be perfectly flat. Give that a few seconds to cool. I'm going to flip it around. And we'll do the same over here. Tab to the outside, doubler to the inside. Give this 45 seconds to cool down before moving on to the next step. All right, now we're going to add this back spar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just fill these two cavities with hot glue and just push this together. And once that glue cools down, we'll come back and add a little bit more glue here at the corners for strength. Now you'll notice that there's a gap on either end. This one's pretty small, this one's pretty big. That's okay. Now that the glue is cooled, I'm going to go and add a little bit more here at the corners. I'm going to do that on each side. Now you can go and wipe off the excess using a scrap piece of foam. Now we're going to close everything up here on the ends. And I'm just going to add a little bit of glue. And I'm going to bend this back spar to meet up with this spacer. You're going to notice that this remains straight and you're going to be getting a little bit of a curve and that's what we want all right so we're going to do the same thing on the other side i'm just going to put a little bit of glue on this spacer
and I'm going to bend this rear spar to meet it. Again, we're going to have a slight curve right here. You'll definitely want to watch your fingers right here. Uh, there's a little bit of glue squirting out. Don't get burned. Like before, allow about 45 seconds for the glue to cool down and then you can come back and add a little bit more at the corners for some added strength. Got my scrap piece of foam. We're going to wipe away the excess. I'm going to flip this around and go ahead and reinforce the corners with hot glue on this side as well. Remove the excess. And we're on to the next step. Now that we've got the spar assembly complete, we're going to go ahead and add the upper wing skin. I've already added a little bit of an airfoil to this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a barbecue skewer and I'm going to pop these little rectangles out. These rectangles will line up to these little tabs at the front of the wing spar assembly. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit more curvature. And it's actually more than what we're going to need. And I'll get to why I'm doing that here shortly. This is going to be your aileron. This I'm going to go ahead and add some glue. I want this solid. So I'm going to add a little line of glue there. And let that cool for 45 seconds or so. Now we're working on the second section of the upper wing skin. And what I'm going to start out by doing is flipping it where there's a score line facing upward. We're going to remove the larger section of paper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run my X-Acto knife right down this score, not cutting all the way through. I'm going to break this and I'm going to put a little bit of glue in here. If you have glue that squirts out, take a piece of scrap and just remove the excess. Now what we're going to do is we're going to form an airfoil. We're going to do it exactly the same way we did on this first section. I'm drawing backwards with my left hand, applying slight pressure with my right hand. You can kind of see I'm moving my hand left and right very slowly. And now we have a nice airfoil shape. And again, uh, the actual shape isn't too critical. The goal is to simply get the foam on the bottom side good and crushed. I'm going to form it up a little bit more. Glued this a minute ago. That's had plenty of time to dry. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add this top skin to the spar assembly. So I'm going to start out by filling these with glue. And I'm going to run a real heavy bead all the way down, starting with this large spacer. I'm completely covering the top of each spar, as well as this small spacer here on the end. And I'm using a lot of glue. That gives me plenty of time to get everything in position. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up these tabs to those little cavities. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply pressure evenly across the entire wing. I'm holding the leading edge down and keeping real even pressure 
where the glue on top of the spars is meeting the wing itself. You'll want to hold this probably a minute, minute and a half. Uh, I want to make sure that nothing shifts. And so I want to make sure, I don't want to take any chance of having that glue still allow a little bit of play between parts. Now we're going to add the second section. What I'm wanting to do is to shingle this top layer of paper over this layer right here. So we're going to kind of come in high and then push down. And that fit isn't too bad. You might have to bend this a little bit more. You might have to straighten it up just a little bit. After I test fit it, I'm going to go back and I'm going to add glue. Now I'm going to put most of my glue along this bottom edge. I'm going to be adding glue to the bottom edge on many, many steps. And the reason that I do that is whenever I shove parts together, that glue is going to want to squirt out. I always want to squirt towards the inside. I want to try to keep all excess glue off the surface. I'm going to come in pretty high and push down. I'm going to get a little bit of glue squirting out and that's all right. I'm going to try to minimize it as much as we can. I'm pressing the two parts together. If I see a little gap, I'm reaching in from the bottom and pressing up. And in the front here, I'm pressing down. You'll just have to make little minor adjustments as that glue cools off. Give this a full minute to dry. Now you may notice that things are not stuck really, really well at this point, and that's okay. Uh, I'm stuck here, but I've got a pretty good gap back here. That's okay. We're going to come back in just a minute, flip this upside down, and add glue from the bottom. The first application of glue just kind of gets things lined up a little bit. And so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to come back and I'm going to add a bead of glue right here at this seam. After applying glue to the underside, I'm going to flip it back over and apply pressure between the two halves. I'm really watching that seam to make sure it's good and clean. I may have to bend one side up or push one side down. Definitely give it a full minute to cool off. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to add a pretty healthy bead of glue right along that line. I'm going to fill that gap. And like we did up here on the leading edge, we're going to do the same on the trailing edge. I'm going to push the two together, and that's looking really good. Now normally, whenever we begin forming something over the edge of a table, uh, we're just moving foam in one direction. On this wing tip, we're going to be creating an airfoil shape this way, but we're also creating a taper this way. So foam doesn't normally like to do, that, do this, so we're going to spend a little bit of extra time crushing it in multiple directions. So we're going to do it the same way as before. You're, you're not going to be able to put the palm of your hand on there, but you can put a couple fingers across and just draw it down. Again, I am, I'm pulling with my left hand. I'm applying pressure with my right hand. I'm going to flip it around. And you can see so far, I'm just going in one, one direction. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of roll it this way just a little bit. And then I'm going to kind of turn it diagonal. This just makes the foam form up a little bit easier. OK, 
Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to match this up. I'm going to match this up beginning at the leading edge. And you can see that I've got a nice clean seam up to about where my finger is. So from here all the way to the leading edge, we've got a good snug fit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply glue. Again, I'm going to be applying glue towards the bottom of this piece because I want that glue, whenever I press these two pieces together, I want that glue to squirt down, not up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shingle, as I put this together, I'm going to shingle this piece of paper over this piece of paper. If you happen to shingle this piece of paper over this piece of paper, that's okay. Just whatever you do on this side, also continue on this side. Now you're going to notice we've got a good tight fit here, but we've got a great big gap right here, and that's okay. Definitely give this a good minute to dry. You saw that I applied a really healthy bead of glue on that edge. Mm. All right, now we're ready to close this gap up. Make sure you do not apply glue on this straight edge right here because your aileron needs to be able to work freely. What I like to do to keep the build nice and clean is I'm going to flip this upside down and I've got this piece of foam is closer to me than this piece of foam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply glue to this piece because when I scissor this down, it's going to push that glue this way. That, that's going to keep your build a little bit cleaner. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm just going to put a little pressure on there, close that gap. Again, I'm shingling this piece of paper over this piece of paper. You're going to notice a little bit of puckering right here. That is just going to happen sometimes. You can minimize it by working that foam over the edge of a table a little bit more. But sometimes it's just going to be created no matter how much you form. I'm going to add a bevel to this aileron. And what I like to do is using a straight edge, I have about 3 sixteenths of an inch between the edge of the ruler and the edge of the, the aileron. And you can do this with an X-Acto knife. You can also do this with large utility razor. But what I'm going to do is keeping my fingers back keeping my fingers spread out wide. I'm going to angle my knife back and what I want to do is I want a nice clean movement um, side to side. I don't want to move the knife this way. I don't want to move the knife this way. I just need a nice clean movement from side to side. So I'm going to push through. I'm going to draw it side to side. And one other thing that I want to point out and I didn't do right here is I usually twist my knife slightly clockwise and that prevents that from happening. Make sure that you don't cut the paper hinge when you're cutting this bevel. This takes a little bit of practice. There's plenty of scrap foam supplied with the kit so if you're not comfortable cutting a bevel just go practice on scrap. Cut you, I don't know, five or six pieces. Try this. Uh, by the time you do a dozen, you'll be an expert. If you accidentally cut through that paper, you can always flip it over, add a piece of tape, and it'll be just fine. With the aileron open, you're going to add a line of glue from one end to the other, and then you're going to use a piece of scrap to immediately wipe it away. Allow about a minute for that glue to cool, leaving the aileron fully open. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Again, we're just going to peel this large section of paper off. 
And before I form, I'm going to go ahead and add a bead of glue right here and let that cool for a few uh, a minute or so. Just like on the other side, we've got the score up and we're going to tear this large section off. You can use your X-Acto knife and run down that score. And we're going to apply a small amount of glue inside that crack. If you've got excess, you can just wipe it away using some scrap. Now that that's had time to cool, we're going to go ahead and form up this first wing skin using the same process as before. Drawing down with my left hand, applying pressure with my right hand. And again, I'm just moving my hand left to right, right to left, applying even pressure so we've got a nice, even airfoil. That looks nice. And we're going to do the same thing on this second section. And I'm just going to eyeball that quickly. They line up pretty good. I'm going to use my barbecue skewer to remove these two, to clean out these two cavities. Now we're going to apply this second wing skin and just like before, we're going to clean out these cavities and we're going to go along the tops of these spars with a very heavy bead of glue. As I mentioned earlier, we definitely want a very heavy bead of glue. This gives us lots and lots and lots of time to move everything around. I'm also going to put a little bit of glue in these cavities. It's always a little bit tricky lining this stuff up. There we go. And again, just gentle pressure. Definitely want, definitely want the leading edge of the wings to be lying flat on the table. And you don't want to press too hard because you want to be able to keep that nice, gentle curve. If you press too hard, you might get some hard lines here and here where the spars are. Now we're going to add this second piece and when I test fit it you can see that it's arched up just a little bit too much so I'm going to kind of flatten things out just a bit. And with a little bit of pressure I've got a nice clean joint. All right, I've got my test fit. Now I'm going to pull this off and I'm going to add a bead of glue to this lower edge. Using a pretty healthy bead. Oops, I slipped. Got a little excess glue there. I'm going to wipe that away. And again, I'm going to shingle this top layer of paper over this edge. I need to slide it backwards just a little bit. That heavy bead of glue allows me a lot of time to get this exactly in position. I've got this finger right here pushing down because this one this this wants to pop up. And with my left finger here, I'm pushing this down. I want that glue, I want that seam to be nice and clean. You'll definitely want to allow a full minute for the glue to cool here. All right, now that we've got that glued, we're going to come back and we're going to glue up these seams from the bottom. Again, pretty healthy bead of glue. And I really taper the glue off as I get 
right up here to the leading edge. I don't want to have a bunch of excess glue squirting out. I'm going to flip this back over. Pressing the two halves together. If I need to make any more little minor adjustments to make that seam look good, I do it now. I do that by adding a little bit of pressure on the right side or a little bit of pressure on the left side as needed. If you mess up this seam, one thing that I've done is I've taken a piece of scrap paper that I've torn off the bottom and I've cut a long skinny strip and I've simply stretched it across here and just put a light layer of hot glue, stretch that across and just keep pressure on the right and on the left. And once that cools, even if you had glue squirt out and you it's really ugly, that completely cleans it up. Now I'm going to add glue to the trailing edge seam here. Got a little bit of excess glue squirting out. I'm going to wipe that away. And then I'm just going to push these two together. And apply a little bit of pressure right here because this is up just a little bit too high. This seam can be taped, but I would recommend just holding it with your hands. If you hold it with your hands, you're able to see this seam the whole time. If you glue things up, squeeze it together, and put a piece of tape across there, there might be a gap there that will be hidden by the tape. Now we're going to do the other wing tip. Again, we're going to line it up and we're going to tear off the bottom layer. Start working that over the edge of the table. First one way. Kind of work it diagonally. Diagonal the other way. Kind of work it long ways. And just keep working it. I'm going to eyeball where to apply glue. So it's, it's nice and tight from here to about here. So I'm going to apply glue again favoring the bottom side. I'm going to come up from the bottom so I can shingle this piece of paper over this piece. going to hold it for a full minute. Now we'll close up the rest of this wing tip. Again, you'll notice that this piece of foam is higher than this piece of foam. I'm always going to apply glue to the piece of foam closest to me. And we're going to go right along the edge. And when I scissor that close, it's going to shove all that glue to the inside. Finally, we need to put a bevel on our other aileron. We're going to do this just like before. So I'm going to plunge my X-Acto knife through, being careful not to cut the paper hinge. I'm drawing it to the side with slight clockwise pressure. That gives us a nice clean bevel. And that looks good. So now I'm going to apply a pretty healthy bead of glue right along that seam. And then using a piece of scrap I'm going to quickly wipe that away. I'm going to leave my aileron fully open and allow that to cool for 30-45 seconds. 
This is our bottom wing skin, and this is where the servo goes. I'm going to remove this little rectangle, but rather than throwing it away, I'm going to put it off to the side. We're going to use this in a later step. Now we're going to do the lower wing skin, and we need to add a doubler. There's going to be an outline, and you're just going to line this doubler up to that outline. And now what we're going to do is we're going to remove paper. And we only need to remove paper to about here. If you get it this far or you get it this far, it's okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lay the top of the wing over the bottom of the wing. And all you need to do is you need to make sure that that paper is torn just past this seam. Now the way I'm lining stuff up side to side is this aileron needs to be able to be free to go up and down. So if the lower skin is too far this way, it'll hit. Or if it's too far this way, it'll hit. So we want that right in the center. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a barbecue skewer and I'm going to put a little indention right here. And I'm also going to do one at the trailing edge of the wing where that seam is. And so you can see where I've made a mark with that barbecue skewer right there where that seam is. We're going to set the upper wing assembly off to the side just for a second. And I've got these two points created with a barbecue skewer. I'm going to lay this over the edge of a table. And I'm actually going to apply a little bit more pressure than what I've done uh, whenever we form the airfoils. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of rock this back and forth. And I'm only working an area about this wide. If the curvature isn't as clean and neat as some of these others, it's okay. This is a little bit difficult to do. Now I'm going to lay this like that. And I'm going to lay this here on top. And that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be all the way up. Uh, we'll add a little bit of glue later and that'll, that'll keep that closed. So now what we need to do is we're going to glue the lower wing skin to this upper assembly. Now here's what I'm watching for. When aligning the upper and lower wing skins, I want these two edges to come together exactly. And so that'll give me my alignment forward and backwards. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this pinched and I'm going to move my aileron. So even though my position is good front to back, side to side I need to slide this down just a little bit. And now that aileron is free. Now that we know how the alignment works, we're going to add a very healthy bead of glue along this spar. I'm also going to do it along this large spacer. Put a lot of glue on there. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a real healthy bead of glue on the leading edge of this lower wing skin. I'm only going to apply glue up to where we've got this bend. I'm going to flip this upside down. I'm first going to align that leading edge, which is going to give us position forward and backwards. I'm going to flip it over really quickly. Looks like I need to move it to the side just a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to flip it back. Now 
and everything looks aligned so now it's just a matter of just having good even pressure it's no problem to do this by yourself definitely want to give this a minute and a half to dry now that everything's glued together we're going to turn our attention to the wing tip so there's just a little gap right there and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squirt a little bit of glue in there pinch that together and I'm going to put tape on this I've got about four inches of tape I want to make sure that tape stays good and stuck every once in a while I'll work on something I'll come back and one of the edges of the piece of tape is popped loose you're going to notice that this lower edge is a little bit longer than the top that's okay uh, we'll come back and trim that sometimes wings aren't perfectly aligned so we just left this a little bit long while that's cooling we can flip this upside down and we're going to squirt a little bit of glue right in here. And just hold that for about 45 seconds to a minute. Now we're going to finish gluing up the leading edge. I'm going to go in here and put a real healthy bead of glue right along that top edge and I'm going to fold this up. Now there's going to be a gap that's going to need to be closed up with a piece of tape. I'm going to pull it right here. I'm going to pull it tight here. Now that we've got this leading edge all the way glued, we need to get some glue between the spar and the lower wing skin. There is going to be a very large gap. And the reason that I had the leading edge done first is because if we would have glued the spars to the lower wing skin, we might have had alignment issues right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Hold my wings vertical and I'm just going to drip glue down along the sides of the spar. And I'm actually do both spars. And we're just going to get a little bit of glue underneath between the spar and the lower skin. And then we're going to gently push that closed. Give this a full minute and a half because there's probably quite a bit of glue down there. The more glue you use, the longer it takes to cool. And the last step on the wing is we're going to close up this last section. Squirt a little glue inside there and hold it closed. If you got a piece of tape handy, apply a piece of tape and we're ready for the next side. Now we're going to go ahead and do the opposite side. Again, we're going to start with a doubler, match a doubler up with the outline, and we're going to tear off again about this much paper. Like we did on the other side, I'm going to align this lower wing skin. First thing I'm going to do is line up this leading edge. And I'm going to look at where my aileron goes up and down. It looks like I've got good clearance on either side. Now I'm, I'm going to mark with a barbecue skewer right where that seam is. Line those two marks up you made with the barbecue skewer and just bend it over the edge of a table. Like before, we're just working an area about this wide.
check alignment real quick. This time I've got the bottom side up. Making a slight adjustment left to right. And because we use so much glue, we still have time to move stuff around. That looks good right there. Definitely allow at least a minute and a half while the glue cools. If you're afraid this leading edge isn't going to close up the way you like, you can put a ruler along the edge and that'll give you good even pressure and make a really good seam. Alright, I'm going to go ahead add some glue between the lower skin and the spars. Do that on both the front and the back. And we'll hold that closed. And lastly, we're just going to close up the trailing edge of the wing. I'm going to apply tape. Before installing your servos, be sure and center them. There's a link below that will give you instructions on how to do that if you're not sure how. We're going to go ahead and install servos. It's going to be a little bit tricky to run these wires. Um, Instead of running the servo wire right between the spars, we've got a spacer right here. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to run the wire on the back side of the spar. So in order to get that wire fished through, what we're going to do is take a screwdriver or just a pointy tool of some sort. And you're going to punch through the spar and you're going to create a little opening side to side. And I've taken a push rod and we've bent it to create a little hook. We're going to fish that through the hole we just made. We're going to fold that servo wire over. Hook that. Twist. And we're going to pull that through. Once it's through, pull the connector through, and we're good. And go ahead and add a little drop of glue on either side. Set that servo in. Go ahead and make connection here. And this is wide open. We're going to feed this wire through. And here it comes. And then we'll do the same on the other side. Again, we're just going to go in from the back, create a slot, that connector to go through. Run 
or hook through. Make a loop with the servo wire. Press it flat. Pull through that stick. Make sure that your servos are oriented the same way. Drop glue in the back, drop glue in the front. Set those in. Add the connector and we're just going to snake it through like we did on the first side. I'm going to add a Y, and by now all of our glue has had time to cool. Now you're going to notice when I pull the tape off, I'm only pulling it halfway off. And the reason I do that is I don't want to take this piece of tape and tear it up and pull the paper with it, so I'm only going to go to the seam. So I'm going to do the same thing here on the top. Always pull your tape from the back towards the seam. Be sure and give your wings a final inspection. Make sure that everything is closed up. like I missed one here. Put a squirt of glue in there and like I did on the other side I'm going to put a pretty long piece of tape across there. I use a longer piece of tape because I don't accidentally want one of these to pop loose then I'll have a big gap. Now that we've got the wires installed we're going to take those two little rectangles that I told you to save and we're going to glue them right here. And that's just going to kind of stiffen things up in there. You're going to put this piece just off to the side of that little cutout. Placement isn't completely critical, but you definitely don't want to block that little notch. It could be a little further this way and, and it won't get hurt. If it's not quite square, nothing's hurt. So now we're going to add this spacer to the other side as well. Glue on both sides. And again, we're going to put that just off to the side of that notch. And just squeeze and hold, let it cool for about 45 seconds. For the next part of the video, Josh is going to walk you through installing push rods. So John has done an awesome job with this wing. We're going to go ahead and show you how to put the push rods in. And the first thing we're going to do, if you haven't already, we're going to center up our servos and we're going to install our servo arms perpendicular to the hinge line on our aileron. Once you have that in, go ahead and take your screw and put it in. Don't neglect this step because your flight characteristics are only as good as your controls. For our servos, the shortest servo screw is going to be the one that's going to lock down the arm. So our next step, we're going to go ahead and take our Z-Bend and we're going to pass it through the furthest hole on our control horn. Now notice that we haven't glued our control horns yet so we can always remove these. I'm going to go ahead and take my thumb and I'm going to mark just on the closest side of the hole as you see right here. I'm going to grip this with my pliers and I'm going to bend this straight up towards me. So I'm going to do a quick check, make sure everything lines up nice, and it does. 
Next up, I'm going to go ahead and grab my pliers. I'm going to go about two millimeters in. I'm going to bend this out towards the wingtips. This is going to create what we call a modified Z-bend. Once we're happy with it, we can cut it. Now don't worry, if you have any difficulties or maybe you made it too long or too short, you have plenty of extra push rod material. Go ahead and make another one. So notice we have included in our control horn. We're going to go ahead and just pop this out in its entirety. Next we're going to pass our push rod through the bottom of the servo arm. I have to use the pliers and just kind of rotate this up. And then now we can go ahead and push our control horn right back in. And we're just going to confirm that nothing has moved. Our servo arm is parallel to our hinge line and our control horn with the holes over the hinge line is nice and neutral. Once you're happy with that, we can go ahead and take a bead of glue, put it right down in, and press it in place. Make sure you give this plenty of time to dry so you have a nice strong control link. We're going to repeat the exact same process now on the other side. Now the wing is done and it's time to move on to the fuselage. The fuselage skin consists of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. Make sure you have all those located. The formers, there's gonna, each one is gonna be doubled up and you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six of those. Now, I wanna show you something on the formers. Um, the first two are exactly the same size. Second two, same size. Third, same size. When we get to the fourth, you're going to notice that one is larger and one is smaller. This one, they're going to be the same size. And then this last one, one is going to be smaller than the other. We also have canopy sections. This is going to be one section, here's another, and then the last section of the canopy is actually built into the fuselage skin. For doing the fuselage, make sure that you have got lots and lots of tape. Um, as this thing comes together, it's going to be completely covered in blue tape. I'm just using just a blue masking tape that sticks good, but I don't have to worry about delaminating whenever I peel it off. Use ordinary painter's tape. It works great for this. First piece we're going to be doing is this little skinny one. It doesn't matter which side you pull off, and the way I do it is I just run it over the edge of the table, much like I do the larger components. It's a little harder because you're not using the palm of your hand, you're just kind of using your fingertips. It won't be quite as uniform as the larger components, but that's okay. Uh, as long as the inside of that foam gets crushed, it'll curve really nicely. I'm gonna apply a small amount of glue and I'm gonna shingle one side under the other and it doesn't matter which. Allow about 45 seconds for the glue to cool and we can move on to the next one. Now we're gonna move on to the next section. It doesn't matter which side you pull off. And we're gonna do the same thing as we did on the other. We're just gonna draw it over the edge of the table You can kind of see we've got a little bit of bend. It's now that comes together really nicely. I'm going to apply a small amount of glue. And I'm going to shingle one side under the other, and it doesn't matter which. Allow about 45 seconds for the glue to cool, and we can move on to the next one. Moving on to the next part. This one's a little wider. I've got a little bit more to work with. So put the palm of my hand on this and start drawing it down. We're doing this the exact same way we did the wings. We're just trying to get a little more curvature out of it now. I'm using the same amount of pressure. It just may require Maybe necessary to go over this a few more times than you do the wing on some of these larger components. 
Okay, I'm gonna bend these tips together where they come together and they meet up flush. I don't like it to come together like this. I like these edges to come together just like that. I'm gonna apply a little bit of glue more towards the inside. All right, the next section, gonna have the score side up. There's a score here. We want that facing up. We're gonna remove this large section. Once you remove the paper, it'll look like this. And then we're gonna do the same thing as the others. feels pretty good. It still feels just a little bit stiff right here, so I'm going to work just the edge. If you have one of these pop loose, it's okay. We'll get it reattached here shortly. That comes together nicely. The two edges are good and flush. As these pieces get bigger, we're going to tape them. They get harder and harder to hold. Heavy bead of glue favoring the inside. A dab just a little bit and shingle one underneath the other. And I'm going to put my thumb right there. There's no glue squirting out so I'm not worried about getting burned. And I'm going to run a piece of tape across that. And I'm just kind of rounding things out. You'll have some little flat spots along the way and there we go. The final shape isn't critical. The formers will really help get that final shape as we uh, finish up the fuselage. Okay, in the next section, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this up. And it's a pretty healthy bead of glue. And I'll just put a roll of tape there. Kinda weight that down. I'm gonna do the same thing on this next section. While these two are cooling, we're going to move on to this one. This is the most challenging piece of the entire build. I've got it where this is pointing to the left. You're going to notice two sets of lines near the center. You're going to notice two sets of lines that are offset. This is the side we want to peel. So make sure that your part is in this position before you peel the paper away. Now for starters, I'm going to create a little bit of a bend right down the center. I'm only working an area about an inch and a half wide. And the reason I'm doing this is if you look at the shape of this former, Right now we're forming this area, which has a lot of curvature. The sides are relatively flat. And then about right here and about right here is where this wraps around. So we're gonna spend quite a bit of time forming an area here, forming an area here, and forming an area here. Now the edge of this table is fairly round. And so it's going to get us part of the way to accomplishing the curve that we're wanting to get. It's not going to get us all the way. 
So for starters, we're just gonna get things bent just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go down here and work this. Flip it around, do the same. And you'll notice this is still really, really stiff. And to get these edges together, it's gonna be very, very difficult. So I learned a trick not too long ago that really helps with these really, really tight bends. It's just an ordinary cutting mat. They put right up on the edge of a table. Instead of it being rounded, this is fairly sharp by comparison. So I'll take that and I'll start working those same areas again. And that really crushes the foam. Once that foam is crushed, it's a lot easier to form into the shape we're trying to get. If you don't have a cutting mat handy, all you need is a good 90 degree edge. Sometimes countertops have that. If you don't have anything else, a long ruler taped on either end will work. It's not ideal, but it'll still give you a 90 degree edge to form over. As I work the material towards what will be the seam, I'm kind of bending it. I'll flip it over and do the same thing. And I'd say it's about three-eighths of an inch or so. I'm just taking it, just bending it. And so we've got quite a bit of shape in there, but it still doesn't want to go together real well. So what we're going to do at this point is I'm going to tear off some pieces of tape about eight to ten inches and I'll need two or three of them I'm gonna roll this like a newspaper and I'm gonna put a piece of tape around it now it doesn't matter which way you roll it because we're going to unroll it here in a little bit and then turn around and roll it the opposite way. What we're doing is we're kind of training this foam to do what we want. So if the foam stays like this for 20 or 30 minutes when we come back and we remove the tape, it's still going to want to spring open a little bit, but then we're going to roll it up like a newspaper the opposite way. Now we're going to move back to these two sections. They've had plenty of time to dry, and you're going to see a line right down the center. You want that line up. You can see this side, there's a little bit of a crease, but no real line. With the line facing up, we're going to peel the paper off the entire surface. With the paper peeled off, we're going to go ahead and form this up. This section folds over just like this, so really we're, we're done from here to here. That just leaves this little strip. This little strip is going to end up closing together, and right now I can feel that that just doesn't want to close, so that just tells me I need to do a little bit more for me. Those now go together with very little effort. That's what we need. Have a piece of tape ready. Heavy layer of glue towards the center. 
dab, dab, shingle, and we're going to hold it. This will need to cool about 45 seconds. Here's the arm. Once again, there is a small score line right there. We want that facing up. We're going to tear these sections off. And we're going to do the same thing as the other parts. I am spending most of my time forming in this center section and down here in this section because again, the sides for the most part are a little straighter than the top and then these bottom edges. And those edges are coming together without too much issue. Go tear off some tape. Now you see, I'm tearing off quite a bit of tape, and the reason I do that is if you get a short section of tape and one side pops loose, you might have a great big gap. You can always fix that gap. It just won't look as good. Same method as before. One side is always higher than the other. I dab them, start seeing those strings form, and I shingle one side underneath. And I make sure the, this back edge is even with one another. I put the tape anywhere I see a nice, clean seam. So it looked really good right there, so I started there. Alright, that looks good. Now I'm going to move back to the last section, and I'm going to pull the tape off that. And you can see how this side looks like it's going right where it needs. This side is still a little bit high. So this time when we roll it up, we're going to start with this edge. So we'll leave this off to the side for a little bit and we'll start putting all these formers together. I'm starting at the back of the plane and with these two you're going to see that one is slightly smaller than the other. When you glue these together you'll definitely want this window lined up and these holes lined up. Avoid putting glue around the holes. These need to be completely clear so that the straw can pass through it for the control rods. If you do end up getting glue in there, it's not the end of the world. We can take a barbecue skewer, punch it through, and you'll be just fine. Moving towards the nose of the aircraft, the next two are going to be exactly the same size. Again, keep glue back from the holes. We'll make sure those holes line up and the windows line up. So move forward. The next two are like the very first one we did. One of them is smaller than the other. There are no holes. You just have a window. Now 
make sure those windows are exactly lined up. The next two, they're exactly the same size. And don't do what I did. I'm going to wipe away the glue so it doesn't get in that hole, even though I just smeared it right in. The bottom of this is formed up by this piece. We're going to open this, tear out the center. Some glue in that channel. Watch your fingers on this step. Smear some glue on one side or the other and squeeze everything together. Watch your fingers on this step because it's a small part and that glue can squirt out and burn you. The last two are the same size. They go together just like all the others. Now that all the formers are glued together, we're going to go back and we're going to peel all the tape off this one. And one thing to be careful of when you're removing tape, you don't want to delaminate it. So I'm going to pull it this way. All right, now look at that part. That's no tension on my hand at all. Very, very light tension that comes together and does exactly what we want it to do. So I'm going to inspect my edges. Kind of, I like the way that looks. I don't think I need to roll it up again. I'm going to go ahead and tear off a few pieces of tape. Heavy bead of glue. I usually use a little bit heavier bead than what I do on the other components because this one likes to shift around a little bit. So I've got good, I've got a good seam with good overlap up here. So on this particular part, I'm going to start taping it at the top. I've got a little bit of an opening down here. I'm going to start squeezing. I'm squeezing with my left hand and pushing down in the center with my right till that seam looks just the way I want it. And because we used a real heavy bead of glue, it's still ahead and cool and we still have time to work. piece looks good. Now that we have all the sections of fuselage glued together and all the formers glued, we're going to go ahead and start creating the fuselage. I generally start at the nose of the aircraft and move backwards. First thing I do is I will lay this small one, this first one on top of the second one. I start off by lining these two up exactly. You don't want them clocked one way or the other. Try to get them as close as you can. As long as you line these seams up, everything will match up very nicely. And I'm looking for a nice clean seam. So it looks like I've got a nice clean seam between this vertical seam and about here. So we're looking at about 25% of the entire circumference. Now what I'm going to do is add glue to about 25% of the circumference. Sometimes you can do more, sometimes you do less. 
sometimes you can put glue all the way halfway around it just kind of depends on how these parts lay on top of one another so the seam is lined up here and as this glue cools I'm keeping my fingers out of the glue but I'm keeping those edges nice and clean now I'm going to do is start seeing how far I can glue the next section and it looks like I'll be able to do, do it to about the midway point I'm going to pry the part open so there's a gap and I'm going to squirt just a little glue in there you don't have to get the entire circumference uh, any spots that we miss we can go in from the back and add a little bit more glue a little bit later okay everything's coming together really nicely so again I'm gonna squeeze and create a gap come in add a little bit of glue I got a little excess on here, so I'm going to wipe it away with some scrap. The other reason you don't want to use a whole lot of glue is if you come in from the inside, you don't want to have a whole bunch of hot glue dripping down where it'll burn your finger. Okay, so we've got a nice clean shape there. Now I'm going to do make everything strong. I'm going to put a real healthy bead of glue all the way around. And let that cool. I'm going to grab the next section and before we connect these two pieces together I'm going to go ahead install our first former. The formers will have a tick mark at the six o'clock position. That tick mark will line up with the seam. It's very important that that tick mark always line up with that seam. There are a number of these and if you have one that's clocked incorrectly your power pot is not going to fit in the way it's supposed to. Sometimes these will go right in, and sometimes they require a little bit of work. If I were just to take and press this down right now, I would be tearing away a little bit of foam, and that's what I want to avoid. Since this part is a little bit tight up here, I'm going to use an X-Acto knife. I'm just going to hold my X-Acto knife at an angle, and I'm going to drag it around the perimeter. And I'll show you here in just a second how much I'm taking off. Because we're not taking off a whole lot. So we're coming in not quite 45 degrees. You can see that I'm only cutting through this first layer and I'm not really even getting into the second layer. And let's see if I've removed enough to make this fit in. There we go. So that fits nicely. Now you can see I'm not quite clocked correctly. And that's enough to kind of throw things off. So I'm going to take and twist this part. If you need to pull the part out, that's okay. There we go. Now you'll also notice that I, I left the tape on there. I don't remove the tape until I'm completely done with the fuselage. If you install formers without the tape, you're going to create a gap right there. And that gap can be fixed, but every time you add glue, you risk getting excess glue all over the place. So just leave the tape on there, and uh, we'll just peel it off at the end. 
one of these pieces came off, that's okay. It's purely decorative. We'll uh, add that on here shortly. I'm going to take and bend these backwards and apply some glue right along the inside. I'm going to do half of them. And then I'm going to push them, but not quite close that all the way. I want those to be kind of flared just slightly. After about 45 seconds to a minute, we'll do the other side. If you remember, we had one piece fall off right there, and we'll glue that back on. Now we'll do the other side. Same as before. Bead of glue. We'll do all but that one that fell off. If you had any pieces fall off, just glue them right back on. Now that this former is in place, I'm going to go ahead and glue this section on. So just like before, I'm going to lay this piece on. And it looks like that I can go almost all the way to the halfway point. Before I glue this in place, I am going to make sure that my seam is visible down here because when I'm assembling this, I always have this seam where I can watch it. Again, it's critical that this stuff doesn't get rotated one way or the other. I'm going to add glue as much as I can right on the exposed white foam. Okay, we're good there. Now we're going to finish gluing this together. I'm going to squeeze it top and bottom. That's going to give me a little bit more of a gap. Again, I'm not worried about getting it around the entire perimeter. I'm most concerned with having a nice, clean seam. Now that I've got this glued in several places, I'm going to go around the inside with a heavy bead of glue. Now I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to go around this former with a heavy bead of glue. Now we're going to add the next former. So grab this section. There's a small tick mark right up here at the top. It's going to line up with this long score. So we're going to want it like this. I'm going to add glue. Line up the tick mark. I'm mashing this upwards a lot. I really want this thing seated against this edge. And now that it's pushed down, I'm going to squeeze it side to side while that cools. Hold this for about a minute. Now I'll add this small section. Heavy bead of glue. And put this right in the bottom. And there's a little tick mark. Line that up with the seam. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of stretch. Got some small gaps, it's alright. Hold this for about 45 seconds. 
Now we're going to glue this section onto here. You'll notice that this is slightly larger than this. So when the two go together, there's actually going to be a little bit of a lip. So when we glue this on, just make sure that that lip is consistent all the way around. I generally put this piece on all at once. It's not really critical how this one fits. Again, I'm gonna align this seam with this one. I used a pretty heavy bead of glue, so I'll have plenty of time to position this. And you can see this lip I'm talking about. Because we used a heavy bead of glue, let's give it a little closer to a minute so it doesn't shift on us. All right, so I'm going to step in for a moment real quick to show you how we're going to go ahead and put this pot assembly together. Uh, John did a great job building the cowling, and we have his main fuselage piece. What we want to do here is we want to give this a quick test fit to make sure that this pod slips down inside the cowling, just like you see. The way we're going to make sure that this stays nice and square is we're going to put our attention towards the very front and make sure that this is close to being flush as possible all the way around here. If you notice, it's kind of a has a big gap at the top that means you're gonna have the wrong thrust angle so take your time to do a quick test fit even if you have to trim a little bit get any glue globs out of the way to make sure that it's nice and flush all the way around now when we're test fitting everything make sure that we always keep this bottom reference line as the bottom the bottom of this is going to be the piece that you see here the shorter segment of the power pod holder once you have that fit we can pull this out and we're just going to put glue where we need it i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to focus my glue on the three sides that are going to make contact. Right around those three edges. Then I'm going to go ahead and pass this through one final time and look for alignment. Now don't worry about that extra glue squirting out. We're going to go ahead and take a scrap piece of foam and smooth it out. One thing I really like to do is after everything is dry, I like to go back with another layer of glue just around the seams and smooth it out once more. We're going to let this thoroughly dry and then we're going to start preparing the front part of our fuselage to fit the cowling onto. While the front portion of my cowling is drying, I'm going to go ahead and dress a couple pieces on this just to make sure everything goes really smooth. Uh, first thing is, is our cowling is going to meet this top portion nice and flush. In order to keep it that way, we need to go ahead and trim this portion off. So if we actually projected a straight line through here, we'll remove the material that's going to get in the way. Along with that, the two bottom corners of our sleeve are going to kind of conflict with these two areas right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and carve out the areas just ahead, once again projecting an imaginary line just in front of that to make sure that everything slides through nice and easy. Alright, so we'll do the top one first here. What I kind of like to do is kind of hold an imaginary line and see where it lifts up. That's where I'm going to remove. easy way to tell that you're good is if you roll this down on the table, if it doesn't bump up, you're nice and flush. Let's go ahead and put our attention also into these two corners here. Now when we test fit this, we may want to make a little bit more removal, but I'm just going to go ahead, knowing that I need to take most of it off now, I'm just going to go in each way and kind of chew out those corners. This is going to give us another little spot that we can have glue down in, another little point of rigidity. With these areas carved out, we're going to go ahead and give ourselves a test fit here. I'm going to go ahead and slide once again, making sure that my bottom seams are on the bottom. I'm going to slide this forward. I'll just kind of use the table as my friend. And what I'm looking for is to get this cowling lined up nice and neat with this back seam that you see here. That seam is going to be our reference line to make sure that our thrust angle is consistent. Notice I'm not forcing anything. If I have to force something, most likely I need to trim something. That looks really good. If we're happy with the way everything looks, we can go ahead and remove this just a little. 
So now I'm going to focus my glue right inside this crevice right here on both sides, and that way I'm going to slide this back in and then reestablish my thrust line. All right, we'll do one half at a time. Notice I'm keeping my nozzle below those fins just so it doesn't make a mess. Right back on the table. A little rocking motion does wonders. There we go. Once we're happy with that, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of take my hands, spread it around, and hold this. Now make sure that when you squeeze in on this that you're not actually pushing the piece right back out. So just kind of look around, make sure you're happy with the way everything looks, and that looks wonderful. Give this about 45 seconds to dry. So our cowling and our fuselage are now one piece, but I want to make it this a little bit stronger. So I'm going to go ahead and take my glue gun, and I'm going to go ahead and focus that nozzle down in there. And I'm going to just drizzle uh, glue right over the main seams. Then I'm going to come back with a scrap piece of foam and smooth it out. We're going to do this on both sides and as much of the top as we can get. Kind of use a scrap piece and the hot glue, kind of like a paintbrush and paint. Our fuselage and our power pod sleeve are all ready to go. Keep in mind, you may have to kind of crush down your power pod a little bit because it's going to be a nice snug fit. I'm going to go ahead and hand this back to John and he can help you finish off the fuselage. All right, now we're going to add this warmer and I'm going to apply glue from about halfway up this rectangle up on both sides. I'm going to line up tick marks to that crease. Gently pinch that closed. You'll want to hold that for at least a minute. Now we're going to add a little more glue on these edges that are still sticking up. And we'll hold. Next we're going to move to this section. We're going to go ahead and add formers. Again, I'm leaving the tape on. So when we stick the formers in, it doesn't rip that apart. Alright, so the former we're putting in is this shape. This one is larger than this one. We're going to put the small one towards the back of the plane. First thing I'm going to do is line up that tick mark with the seam. And we're going to see if this will fit. Again, we don't want to push too hard, but we don't want to crush or deform the edges of the foam. Because it's kind of pear-shaped, we're going to have to squeeze on either side for that to fit in. And it, it seems pretty good. And to still give your little fits going in, go ahead and pop it back out and we're going to add a bevel like we did on an earlier one. This time I'm going to cut into that, that top layer as well. And I found, especially up here at the top, I, I definitely make sure and add some relief there because that's usually one of the areas that doesn't want to go. So you can see now we've got a really good bevel. We'll try fitting that in again. Line up that tick mark. You can see how that fits in there nice. I've got a little bit of a gap on either side. That's all right. In fact, that's a really good place just to add some glue. Squirt some in either side. And I'm also going to run a bead around the top there. And then apply some pressure. Hold this for a minute and a half. Hold it a lot longer than what you think because you definitely want this shape to hold. If it pulls away from the former, when we fit the part in front here, there's going to be a gap, and you don't want that. Now that this former has been glued in, we're going to add the one here in the back. 
There's two of them that are very close to the same size. The one we want, the two formers are the same size. So I'm going to try a test fit. And this one looks really tight. So like on others, we're going to cut a bevel. Let's see if that'll go in now. Line my tick mark with that seam. Now you can see one more fits in there nicely. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drip glue through this rectangle in the front around the perimeter. While that's cooling, I'm going to grab the windshield. I'm going to figure out which side looks the worst. And in this case, both sides look great, so I'm just going to peel this one. And I'm going to take it to the edge of the table. And I'm going to drag it. And you can kind of see that I'm using just a little bit of a circular motion as I drag it. If you look at this leading edge, it's always 90 degrees to the table. So now it's starting to look like a windshield. It's you can feel where the foam has been crushed on the back and it's pliable right there, but right here still needs a little bit of work. So I'm going to kind of move that down, move it around. You can kind of see again where that leading edge is roughly 90 degrees to the table. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to go ahead and build the canopy. I'm going to start out by just applying heavy bead of glue towards the inside. I have one a little bit higher than the other. I'm going to touch, kind of dab, dab, and then shingle the paper and hold for about 45 seconds. While that's cooling, now we've got to get the former put inside this final section. You'll notice that this one is smaller than this one. We want the smaller one towards the rear. Let's test fit it. Line that tick mark up with the seam. Pretty close, but I'm afraid I'm going to be messing up a little bit of this foam. And so I'm going to bevel this smaller former just a little bit. It looks like I'm mostly just going to need to do it at the top. The others I've gone all the way around, but we're really, really close. So I'm just going to bevel it here at the top. Now that I've got that beveled, I put a little glue all the way around the edge on the inside. Line my tick mark with my seam and push that in. Now we're going to glue the other side of the canopy. bead of glue along the inner edge. And I'm going to push down right here as I twist this around. And I'm going to dab and shingle just like I did on the other side. And you'll definitely want to hold this for a minute or, or more. There's quite a bit of tension on this. You'll definitely want to make sure that glue has had plenty of time to cool before you let go.
Now we're going to add the final section of the canopy, which is this little thumbnail piece right here. Peel one side or the other, it doesn't matter. And we're just going to roll this over the edge of a table. I'm going to test fit this piece. And that looks pretty good. All right, so before John goes ahead and puts these two fuselage pieces together, we're going to go ahead and put the push rods in. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to line up these two dots that you see right here. And I just like to kind of put a little crease. And I'm going to go ahead and make a light little crease right through there. Once we have our slit done, we're going to go ahead and put the coffee stir right through the push rod like you see here. Now we can go ahead and we can take our push rod and we can push it through and let it naturally just kind of find that hole like you see here. Now we can go ahead and take the straw, guide it through, a little rocking motion, should pop right through the hole. So we now have a push rod that can go all the way through and we can even pop through this section here and guide all the way to the front. You can go ahead and pull this out and do it to the same to the other side. All right, so here are the two index marks on the other side of our fuselage. We're gonna do the same process. We're just gonna go ahead and put a light crease down through here. We're going to take our coffee stir, we'll pass it through all the way up to the Z-Bend, and now we can go ahead and we can push our push rod through, and then we'll just kind of find that hole we have in our formers, pass it through, and then let the coffee stir do the work and take away that friction. So at this point, both of our push rods will easily pass through the fuselage. I'm going to hand this back to John and he can show you how to put the fuselage together. Now we're going to connect the two sections of fuselage together. Uh, you can see we've, we've passed uh, the coffee stirs from one section to the other. I'm going to go ahead and push these things together and see how they fit. Everything seems to line up okay. In the event that one of them is off side to side or up and down, you can go in with a tool and make one of these holes a little bit bigger so that, things, so that this uh, closes up a little neater. So I'm going to do... I'm going to pull this out just a little bit, and I'm going to apply glue all the way around. I'm going to make this seam look as good as I can, and then we're going to put a piece of tape across there. Now we're going to connect these two sections together. Before we do that, we need to add a little bit of a bevel on the inside of the canopy so that it fits nicely together. So I've cut a pretty big sliver on the inside of the canopy. Now I'm going to check the fit. And you can see that fits nice and snug. We'll push it together here in just a minute. We'll check the other side. And that'll close up nicely. I'm going to go ahead and tape the canopy as well. Just to keep that from breaking open. And apply a whole bunch of glue all the way around the edge. We want to watch that tick mark and make sure it lines up with that seam. If everything is built right, you really don't need glue around the canopy unless you've got something sticking up. After everything cools, we'll go ahead and remove all the tape and I'll show you how to smooth out some of these seams that don't look as good as the others. Also, there's going to be spots that are a little bit higher 
on one side than the other. I'll show you how to smooth those out a little bit. Now that the glue is all set, we can remove tape. Again, when you're pulling tape, only pull it to the seam. Don't go across it because you might delaminate. Now we're going to go clean up the seams between the fuselage sections. Um, you'll notice right here on top. Normally we like to shingle one piece of paper under the other. Well, it might start out high on this side, but by the time it wraps around to the top, it's below and it kind of just forms the this kind of sin perfection. And so if you get a brand new razor blade and you go right along that seam, what that's going to do is you'll cut away part of that. And you won't have a completely perfect seam, but it's going to be really close. I'm pressing hard enough to cut the paper. I'm not pressing hard enough to cut the glue. And I'm just going to go around this a couple times. We've cleaned up a lot of that, but still, this side is just slightly higher than this side. You can kind of work this with your thumb. You'll feel that foam giving way. I'm using enough pressure that I can feel the foam giving way, but you don't want to press so hard that you're going to punch through the foam or create a wrinkle. My recommendation would be start on the bottom. That way, while you're getting the feel for the pressure, if you do actually make a mistake and you put a little tiny crinkle in it, it's going to be hidden down below. Also, I'm going to be looking for any delamination and if I come across some delamination, I'll just put a little drop of glue. All right, that's, this side looks pretty good. I'm going to move over just a little bit. Do the same thing. There we go. That's looking pretty clean. Next, we're going to move on to the tail. Let's start. They're breaking these out. Do that on both sides. With the score up, we're going to remove paper here and here. And when I'm applying glue, I'm keeping everything away from this score. About 45 seconds will get it. I'm going to keep pressure on this. And I'm going to fold the elevator all the way back. And like we've done before, draw my exacto knife straight across. A nice clean double. I'm checking to make sure I didn't accidentally go too deep. When that happens, we can just put a piece of tape on here. With the elevator still folded over, I'm going to put a line of glue all the way across one side. And with a scrap piece of foam, I'm going to wipe away all that glue. Do the same on the other side. and wipe away the glue. Give it about 30 seconds before you move your elevator and you're done. Now we're going to cut the slot for the horizontal stabilizer to fit in. You're going to see some small marks at the back of the fuselage. 
I kind of play connect the dots. You're going to see two little marks there on the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our exacto. We're going to cut from this mark, which is closest to the center, to this mark right here. I'm going to use a straight edge to help me. And it's a little bit awkward holding the straight edge, so I'm just going to lightly draw a line. And I'll go over that line three or four times till I cut all the way through. Now we'll connect the tick marks right here. And now we're going to connect this one with this one right here. Now that piece will pop right out. And we're going to do the same on the other side. And we'll start at the top again. Again, we're going with this top tick mark to the one that's closest to center. And a straight edge. Light line. Once you go over it two or three times, you can probably get rid of the ruler and just follow the line you've started. There we go. Now we've got a slot cut all the way through. And we're going to be able to begin to slide the horizontal stabilizer in. If it's a little tight, you might want to re remove a little bit of material because you don't want to tear this. That feels a little bit snug. So I'm going to go and remove a little bit more material before I push that through. I'll remove a little material from the top. see if we removed enough to allow that to slide in. It feels pretty good. I'm not going to glue it in at this point because once we get the wings on we might have run into some real minor clocking issues along the way and one side may be higher than another and we may have to cut a little bit more relief and twist it this way or cut a relief over here and twist it that way. Now we're going to do the vertical stabilizer and we're going to be using a barbecue skewer and I'm going to have this barbecue skewer stick out about an inch and a half. It'll fit kind of inside this little channel right here. So I'm going to kind of mark it with my thumb. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to roll. And as I'm rolling I've got pressure on my X-Acto knife and it's cutting all the way around then you can just break it off and that works really well so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear off the rest of this foam and I'm going to take that barbecue skewer okay that looks good and we're going to glue it in place What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a light layer of glue, kind of smear it on this paper. I'm just going to take and roll this. Now I have a nice rounded edge. It's nice and clean looking. 
Now you'll notice that the vertical stabilizer doesn't swing free. We're going to take an exacto knife and we're going to make this cut right here. It comes scored from the factory. The concern is it's going to form a weak spot right here. So it's going to ship to you with this as a score, but you need to make it into a cut. Before we attach this to the fuselage, I'm going to swing this open and we're going to bevel it. Just like we've done before, get the right angle and we're going to draw the knife across. And you can see where my knife went up. The problem I had was I, I didn't have clockwise pressure. So this time I'm going to do it again with a little bit of clockwise pressure. And now we got a good bevel. Take a bead of glue. Apply it. And then wipe it away. There are two small marks on the top of the receiver. One here and one up here. This represents your center line. What we're going to do is we're going to put the back edge right up against this edge right here. Right on that center line. I'm going to puncture the fuselage, the barbecue skewer, push straight down. Now that the skewer is through the fuselage, I'm going to swing the whole assembly off to one side and draw a line straight down the middle. Lift it up just a little bit, drop it down, and let's let that cool for about a minute. Our next step is to build the sleeve that the power pot is going to slide into in the front of the nose. To do this, we're going to go ahead and take the piece that looks like this, and we're also going to go ahead and weed out the channels that you see here. Once everything's weeded out, we're going to go ahead and do a quick test fold. Remember that A means that the side plate is above the bottom plate and to glue this properly, we're gonna keep the side plate firm against the table and we're gonna go ahead and focus our glue right on the bottom of the side plate. Go ahead and fold this up 90 degrees and give it about 45 seconds and then do the same process on the other side. Once again, we always like to try to focus the glue where it's gonna give us most of our strength and in this case on the A fold, it's gonna be on the bottom of the side plate. Side plate firm against the table Rotate 90 degrees and hold it for 45 seconds. All right, one last fold here. We're going to go ahead and just do a quick test. I just left a little bit of piece of paper on here just to kind of finish off that seam and give us some extra rigidity. Everything looks really good. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and put glue on both these top pieces here and here. Just fold this up and hold. So our next step now that this is built, we're going to go ahead and pass this through to the front. This is going to be the front portion and it's actually going to key in to the section that you see right here. Now unfortunately I made a mistake. I put the servos in before I was supposed to which caused me not to be able to have enough clearance to pass this through. So I went ahead and removed one so I can do so. We're going to be showing you in this video how to do it in the right order. Alright, so let's go and pass this on through. It's going to have a little resistance just where that bottom cheek cowl uh, meets with it. I'm going to go ahead and reach in and, and take that little ring that kind of gives these uh, fins their angle. I'm going to go ahead and crush it down the two corners. This will push up against the pod and give it a little extra strength, but right now it's resisting it. Then we can just rock it through and push it all the way forward. should be a nice tight fit, so don't force it. Take your time and it will slide right into place. 
Once we push this through, you're gonna see that this actually notches it beautifully, nice and flush right with the top. This gives us our thrust angle. It also gives a nice secure fitting for our power pod to slide in. Now keep in mind, our power pod's actually gonna slide in inverted in this, and you'll see that in a few short steps. But in the meantime, once we're happy with this, we can go ahead and we can put a bead of glue right around the rim, and then also take the bead of glue right along the inside that you see here. So we went ahead and we put glue around our seams, smeared them with a scrap piece of foam. Our power pod sleeve is now done. We're ready to move on to our next step. So this part's getting exciting here. We're gonna go ahead and get to uh, put control surfaces and get them moving with these servos here. First thing we wanna do is we wanna get the servos centered as you see here. Now if you haven't centered servos before, we have a great video on that linked below. So we got our servo centered. We're also gonna use our two long push rods that are included with the kit. If you're scratch building and not building this through a kit, we do have a link down below as well where you can get a whole pack of these. They work great on scratch builds. So the first step we're gonna do before we go ahead and pass our push rods through the coffee stirs is we're gonna take a barbecue skewer and we're gonna go ahead and poke it through the rear bulkhead so everything lines up real nice. There's one. And there's two. Now with a little twisting motion, we can go ahead and pass our push rods through our coffee stirs. And with your two fingers, go ahead and guide the push rod until it lines up with the hole and then pass it through. Go ahead and do this on both sides. With your rudder push rod, you may actually find that you have to push down a little bit to get the uh, push rod to level out and then it'll pass straight through the hole no problem. You shouldn't feel any resistance at all on either one of your push rods. With our push rods passed through, let's go ahead and put our attention towards the control horns on the rear surfaces. Our first step is we're going to go ahead and go to the outermost hole and we're going to pass it through. And let's go ahead and make a temporary connection, making sure that the uh, holes of our push rod match directly over our uh, hinge line. Same process on the rudder. We're going to connect our control horn to our push rod. We're going to take it up and we're going to press it into the rear of the rudder. If you have any kind of binding like we do here, you can always go ahead and you can take a, your razor blade and you can just put a little bit of a relief right in the bottom of the surface. Alright, let's go ahead and flip this over and put our attention towards the inside of the fuselage. We now know how long our push rods are going to be. So what we can do next is we're going to look right around the center section here. Now because the wings of the Corsair are going to kind of go up and into the fuselage, we don't want to mount these servos too low. We want to make sure that they're up high enough. To do that, we're going to go ahead right around where the wing is the highest, and we're just going to go ahead and put our thumb. Once we have this, we're going to go ahead and bend down straight towards the fuselage. Grab it about two millimeters over and bend 90 degrees. Once again, this is called a modified Z-bend. Notice I scratched the edge of the servo here. We want this to be nice and gritty so it bites really well into the foam. We don't want the servo to come loose because we don't want to lose control of our aircraft. We're going to go ahead and go to the outermost hole of the servo arm and roll it up. Making sure that we haven't moved our servo, if we have to preset or reset her in again, that's okay. We're going to go ahead and mount our servos about an inch above the bottom of the wing surface. Once you're happy with where it fits, I kind of push down hard in the foam and let it kind of sink in so I have a good index. I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on the back of my servo. And the biggest thing I'm going to look for here is to make sure that my rudder is nice and centered as I hold it in place. So you can see I'm holding this in place and my rudder is centered. Give us a good minute to dry before you move on to the next step. Now that our rudder's done, we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same process now on our elevator. Make sure with the elevator that it doesn't move too far because you gotta remember it's not glued in quite yet. So we're gonna go ahead and mark right around the middle again. We're gonna grip it. We're gonna bend it straight down. We're gonna grab it about two millimeters down. Then we're gonna bend it straight over. got my servo all pre-scuffed. 
We're going to go to the outermost hole again. A little twist is all you need to get it to pass through. All right, I'm just going to do one last little check to make sure everything looks really good with my elevator. Once again, I'm going to go down about an inch below the, uh, the surface of the wing. Make my little indent, make sure I'm happy with where it is. It should be right where it's about flat. Everything looks good. Nice big glob of glue. And then right back down at the bottom. I'm always gonna make sure that my elevator and my control surfaces are nice and flat as the glue dries. If not, go ahead and move it immediately and then let the glue set for at least one minute. Now that our servos are all glued in and our push rods are all set, we can go ahead and lift these up one at a time. And we'll just put a little bit of glue right where that slot is. And then press it down through again. I know I say this a lot, but it's really important to let the glue thoroughly dry on this so you have a nice control link for your airplane. All right, our servos are now done. We're ready to move on to our next step. So our next step is gonna to be to build our power pod. Now this is the same dimensions of our normal power pod, but just like the FT Scout, it's actually a little bit shorter. Now if you have a typical power pod, you can actually cut it short to the same length that you see here and build along with us. But first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clear out our cavities, simply fold it over 180 degrees and peel off the foam. And our next step is to do an A-fold. Once again, A-folds is where the side plates go above the bottom plate. So we'll leave the side plate firmly against the table as we rotate up 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and focus the majority of our glue on the bottom surface of the side plate up to 90 and hold for about 45 seconds. All right, our glue's dry. Let's go ahead and do the other side. Little bead down on the table up to 90. Now that we have the main portion of our pod complete, we're gonna go ahead and glue on our, our swappable firewall. Now if you're scratch belt along with us, you can also go to our store and get five packs of these if you don't wanna to have to scroll cut it out. We're gonna go and glue this with the bottom surface, as you see here, and as you're facing towards you, it's on the bottom left. If it's facing away from you, it'll be on the bottom right for this little open cavity here. That's gonna be where we pass our wires through. Once we're happy with that, we can go ahead and sit this vertical on the table, put a nice bead of glue, and we're just gonna place this right up there. Once again, making sure that this hole is in the bottom left-hand corner if it's facing towards you. Give this about a minute to dry, and then we're gonna tape it. We're gonna go ahead and take about 10 inches of tape, and centering it up, we're gonna focus the tape not on the top surface, but just below those two holes, kind of centering up on both sides. And just like how we wrap a gift, we're gonna go ahead and press this down. We're gonna fold in one edge, we're gonna fold in the other, and we're gonna fold in the front. Don't neglect this step because this is what gives your power pod all the strength it needs so when you land rough or have a hard, uh, hard crash, most likely this will not break for you. All right, next step here, we're gonna go and take an X-Acto knife here. We're gonna trim out the center holes and we're just gonna pop where the wood screws are gonna go. And of course, we're gonna clear out where our wires are gonna pass through. I've already assembled our new FT Radial CPAC motor. This is a 2218 motor, has more power and efficiency than our old CPACs. Now, if you're building along and you do have an old C motor, don't worry, that's gonna give you plenty of power. This just gives you a little bit more four cell capability and also the ability to swing a 10 inch prop on three cell or four cell, which means crazy power. All right, so let's go ahead and screw this in. I already have the back assembled. I have the X mount assembled and screwed in. I'm just gonna go ahead and guide one wire at a time through. And you'll see that the X mount lines up beautifully right with the firewall holes. All right, we're gonna take the screwdriver that's included with our CPAC. We're gonna go ahead and guide that through. What you're gonna notice is that I only put three screws in the motor mount. That's gonna be more than enough, but also I kinda of wanna avoid this one right here because when this is mounted in the airplane upside down, I don't want the battery to fly forward and puncture itself on that screw right there. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave it out. So next we're going to go ahead and put our ESC on. You're going to notice that this is a different ESC than our classic CPAC. The cool thing about it is our new B and CPACs actually come with a 35 amp ESC. They're both the same. These are actually capable of burst over 50 amps with no problem whatsoever. We're going to pair this with this motor to get the efficiency and the power we need. So the first thing we need, we're going to go ahead and make these three connections. And when we fire up the prop, 
If it spins the way that we don't want, all we need to do is slide out the power pod and reverse any of these two connections and it'll spin the prop the other way. Our power pod's now done. We're ready to move on to the next step, which is putting it in the airplane. So our next step here is we're gonna take our power pod and we're gonna go ahead and fit it down. Now you're gonna notice typically our power pod always mounts where the bottom surface is facing down. In this case, we're gonna feed this through and we're gonna mount it with the cavity facing down like you see here. So it's really important here that we want this to go back as far as possible, but we wanna make sure that it doesn't go so far back that the prop hits it. So I like to take it back just enough right about there. Before we skewer this in, we'll put the prop on and we'll make sure that we have the clearance that we want. All right, so for our next step, we're gonna go ahead and start hooking up our receiver. Now this is really cool. This is a new Spectrum receiver. It's not broken. This actually doesn't have any external antennas, which in my case is wonderful because oftentimes I end up breaking them. We range tested these things and they work phenomenal. So we're gonna go ahead and push this up and the cool thing also about it, it has a bind button instead of a bind plug, which makes hooking up even easier. I've taken my DX80 and I've dialed it to a new model and I'm gonna go ahead and go through the bind process now. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and line up our top yellow plate and we're gonna stick it in the channel one where throttle is. Notice on the very top here, it says data. That's gonna correspond with this white line or yellow line, depending on the connector you have, that will be your data line. So we have ground, power, and data. Next, we'll go ahead and take our rudder servo. Our rudder servo will go in port number four. And finally, we'll take our elevator servo and that's gonna go into port number three. Always make sure when you're doing this step that you keep your prop off because if anything's reversed, you don't want this to go full throttle, it can potentially hurt you. With our transmitter turned off, and I'm just gonna hold the bind button down with my thumb. We go ahead and plug in our battery. We have a flashing orange light. I'm gonna go ahead and take this at least three feet away, power it on while holding on the bind button. There's the bound. All right, so now's a really good time to go ahead and make sure our controls are going the right direction. For our rudder, when we push our rudder to the right, we want to see it go right. In this case, it's going left, which means I need to reverse it. Let's go ahead and look at the elevator so we can reverse it and change everything at once. When I pull back, the rear elevator should go up and it goes down. So all I need to do, I just need to go into my servo setup, go to travel, collect it, roll it over to reverse, click on reverse. I'm gonna to go to elevator, reverse my elevator. I'll go to rudder and reverse my rudder. Now when I move my rudder, everything looks good. When I move my elevator, everything moves good. In our kit, we're gonna have a throw gauge so you can dial this in. 12 degrees will be low rates, 16 degrees will be high rates, and I love running 30% expo on both. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in our wings and get our ailerons all centered up, and then we'll also make sure our motor spins the right direction. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and loosely set this right on top of the airplane. It's really taking shape beautifully. We'll go ahead and make our connection in port number two. There we go. All right, it's really close. When I push my stick to the right, the right aileron goes down, which is wrong. I want it to go up. So I'm gonna go back into my servo setup. I'm gonna go over to reverse. And I'm gonna reverse my ailerons. So now I can go into my sub trim because I'm just a little bit off. Go to aileron and I'll simply roll the scroll until it's where I want it. Cool. All right, our last step on the controls is to make sure our prop moves the right direction. Now we want the prop to go counterclockwise. So, and this is perfect. Now if this is wrong, all we need to do is go to our ESC leads. There's gonna be three of them. Pick any two of the leads and reverse those. Unplug one, swap it out with the other and plug them all back in. Make sure that the brass connections don't touch or it'll short out your ESC and your motor that will reverse the direction of your motor. In this case, all of our controls work the right direction. Our throws are good. We're ready to go on to our next step. Our next step here is I'm gonna disconnect the wings. I'm gonna go ahead and put a prop on temporarily, and then I'm gonna drive the skewer through to lock in my power pod. All right, so this is great. I have just about a pinky width of space right between the cowling and the motor. Too close, it's gonna be a little bit noisy, and too far away, it's just gonna look kinda of funny. We're gonna go ahead and leave this here. I'm gonna make sure that the power pot is firmly against the sleeve, which it is. Now on our kits, you're gonna see four different holes. I went ahead and made them a little bit bigger here just so you can see them easier on this plane. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pass this through. We're not gonna to try to stick it all the way through one side through to the other side because there's a good chance that we won't be able to align. We're gonna go ahead and with a twisting motion, this is going right through that bulkhead so there's lots of strength there. We're gonna pass it on through. 
just like you see here. And then we're gonna go over to the other side and do the same process. Try to get this as level as possible with the elevator. I actually move it and I sight this down and keep these parallel between the elevator and the skewer. Twisting motion again. It'll pop through the firewall. And I just like to make sure that it's all guiding through. So I'll just go ahead and take a quick look. It looks like we got it perfectly. There's one. I'm just going to go ahead and just leave just about an eighth of an inch. And we'll go ahead and do it one more time here. Once again, we're going to line this up, kind of sight down, make sure it's parallel with the elevator. Got a little bit of a twisting motion. There's one side. Right over to the other side. We're going to pass it on through. All right, there we go. So our power pot is now locked in. Everything looks wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and put my nut on the front end here because our prop's all done. Everything's all situated. Next up here is we're going to go ahead and place some Velcro on the bottom of the shelf here. I'm going to go ahead and kind of get this gear out here. We'll dress this up in a second. We're going to put a piece of Velcro right on the bottom. Don't make this Velcro too large or when you put your battery in and you go to pull it out, it's going to go ahead and stick so hard that it'll damage the foam. Just give yourself about maybe an inch and a half of uh, Velcro is all you need. Oftentimes in my head I like to say fuzzy fuselage, so I remember. So we're going to put fuzzy on the fuselage. I'm also going to cut two other inch pieces of Velcro for the ESC to stick up. And we're going to go ahead and stick that on the inside of the power pod that's upside down. So a lot of people have been asking on our new ESCs, what is this little port for? This is actually an auxiliary port. This taps into battery feed and it's filtered. So that way you can power LED lights, you can power FPV equipment. It'll actually provide source voltage, which will, whether it's three cell or four cell, it'll give you that voltage through that connector. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and leave this loose. What we'll do is we'll make our connection and we can either Velcro it on the inside of the wing or we can just tuck it inside the wing cavity. All right, at this point, we're ready to move on. I'm going to hand this over to my friend John and he's going to show us how to finish it off. Now we're going to add some wings. I have laid these wings about where they need to be. Now you can see they fit nicely here in the back. Up front, they're not going down all the way like they're supposed to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut a little bit of material away at the rear so those wings will drop in nicely. Got really good fit front to back. I'm gonna roll it over. That seam looks really nice. We'll push it together there in the front just a little bit. May have to add a little bit of hot glue to fill that seam, but that isn't a bad fit at all. I'll check the other side. And that looks really good too. So now that I've test fit it, the wings out just a bit and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a healthy bead of glue here and here I'm going to let this cool for about a minute and a half I put a lot of glue on there and I want to make sure that's had plenty of time to cool down. Now that the back has had time to, to cool off, I'm going to add a little bit of glue on both sides, going a couple inches on either side. I 
use a piece of scrap, remove some of this excess glue, and I'm going to do the same on the other side. Then I'm going to hold this down for a little over a minute. Now that we've got glue added at the rear and also at the front, I'm going to go back and add glue anywhere I can. Now that the wings are on, we're going to go ahead and flip it upside down and we're going to make sure that our vertical stabilizer is exactly straight up and down. I'm going to run a bead of glue down either side. A good way to line up the vertical stabilizer is to look right down the top of the fuselage. There's a nice line. And you can make an adjustment side to side. With the wings on, we can look and see that the horizontal stabilizer is a little bit crooked. Now remember, we have not glued this in place. So what I'm going to do is it looks like it needs to rotate this way just slightly. So I'm going to take a little bit of material right above this right hand side. I've got my razor blade flat. And I don't have to take away very much. I'm shaving away probably a little less than a sixteenth of an inch. allow this to rotate. Once this is level, I'm going to apply a bead of glue along each side. I'm just going to do the top. After the glue cools off, I'll flip it over and we'll add another bead of glue on the bottom. If you get some excess glue using a scrap piece of foam, Go ahead and just wipe away the excess. Give this about 45 seconds and then we'll flip it over and do the other side. With the top cooled off, I'm going to go ahead and apply a bead of glue to the bottom. Now the vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer are all lined up. I'm going to add a bead of glue on either side. I'm wanting to run a fairly thin bead of glue to keep everything nice and clean. So included in the kit is going to be a black vinyl canopy decal. Now if you guys want to scratch build this, all you need to do is you can download the free pattern or you can go ahead and pick it up a store along with the laser cut plywood parts so you can build along with this video too. There we go. When installing the final cover, Things are going to fit really well here in the back. There may be a little bit of trimming that needs to be done up front. It looks a little wide on either side, so I'm going to go in with a razor blade and make one trim and make another trim. And I may have to do this in two passes. Pull a little material off. Still need to take a little bit of material off of both sides. I'd rather do just a little bit at a time than take too much. Now, so this piece, in order to make sure it lays nice and flat, I'm going to stand this piece up and I'm just going to run, I'm going to cut a bevel going from the top to the bottom. And I'm going to do now yeah, it really closes things up. Now that the bottom's fitted, 
I'm going to glue two of these rectangle pieces together. I'm going to glue it on here, forming a lip. Position isn't super, super critical. You can see I've got about half, it's glued at about the halfway mark. Once that cools, drop that tab in and see how it locks. Pivot this down. And we're going to take a skewer at an angle and shove it through that doubler. I'm going to back that out and I went in about that far. I'm going to take a razor blade and I'm going to roll that skewer. Got some downward pressure on that razor blade. And then you can just snap it clean. Find the hole, and that ought to hold it. We're going to do the same on the other side now. So thanks to John, this is now pretty much ready to fly. The next step here is to establish our center of gravity. Now, especially on the Corsair, this is not a step that you want to neglect. If it's tail heavy, it's simply not going to fly well at all, or if at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the back hatch that John just completed. And I have a 20 100 milliamp four cell here. This is a really good battery if you're looking for speed. We'll make our connection. And I'm actually going to tip this in this wing real quick. We'll get it out of the way. There we go. All right. So for our battery compartment, we have a nice open cavity right here where the battery will be able to turn up and in, just like you see here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try balancing this with a 20, 100 milliamp four cell battery. Now if you're flying off of a smaller battery, you may have to add some lead all the way up in the nose against the front firewall. But for this, I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this in. We'll make the corner and then all the way forward. Just like that. Easy way to tell CG on low wing airplanes is to flip it upside down. And what we're looking for is a nose heavy attitude right around the spar that you see here. And it definitely is that. So with your fingers right on top of the spars inverted, we're gonna go ahead and we'll hang this down. What we're looking for is just a slight nose heavy attitude. Typically on warbirds, we're gonna balance about 20% back, not 30% back. So start at this setting and you can always put a lighter battery in or move your battery around to get the desired performance. At this point, we can button this up. I'm not gonna make my connections until before flying and John's gonna help you finish this off. Now that everything's put together, we're gonna give everything a good looking over and see if there's any areas that need attention. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we've got a little bit of excess on this bottom wing. I'm going to go around this outer edge with a razor blade. Now the lower wing matches the upper. And I'll do the same on the other one as well. If you want this leading edge a little more rounded, there's a couple ways. You can simply take your thumbnail and drag it across. And you can see that foam starting to crush right there on that leading edge. You can also take a Sharpie and do the same thing. We experimented a little bit with using heat also. Uh, whenever we used heat, we took a piece of tape and we ran it from one end of the wing all the way up the other. And we took just a regular iron. We have a small iron here, but you can use a household iron with real low heat. Make sure you use the tape because if you don't use the tape, this is all going to just come open. But you can take and you can do a little bit of shaping there. There are several ways that you can do this. Or you don't have to do it at all. Uh, we test flew 
uh, a few of these where we didn't do any shaping on the leading edge of the wing. It's just a detail if you want to do. That's how we did it. All right, the Corsair is done. It is time to maiden. All right, friends. Sadly, we finished this build up in the night and uh, John had to take off to go back home. But we are ready to maiden his amazing creation here. And one thing, if you've never made in a plane before, we have a great video called Six Quick Tips for a Successful First Flight. Make sure you check that out because it's really important. Things like balance, servo direction, uh, launching into the wind, things we've all covered. It's just a really great video to give you one final checklist to make sure you have a great experience. So uh, everything balances out. I'm going to go ahead and put this into the wind. We'll see how she flies. <laughs> Holy cow, not a click of trim. So typically, uh, planes like the Corsair are riddled with issues with torque. Uh, I just gave it basically just a little bit over half throttle and a gentle launch, and she flies amazing. Now I am flying a four cell, so uh, you guys can uh, have a much more docile experience if you go ahead and go with a three cell, but balance is always the, the crucial key. Let's go ahead and check out slow flight. Are you catching that, Alex? That's ridiculous. All right. Let's do a couple fast passes. No wing waggle, nothing. All right, let's do a low, nice slow pass now. I've flown a lot of different Corsairs, and this by far has the best characteristics that I've ever flown out of any of them. Probably from that light wing loading. See how she does in the small area here. <laughs> Kick it over. Two point roll. Beautiful. All right, friends, so I'm going to go ahead and keep flying this, but one thing I want to really encourage you this may be a challenging build but it's not gonna be a challenging plane to fly. It is a great experience. It slows down beautiful. Uh, thank you again for being part of the Flight Test family. Thank you again to John for designing such an incredible plane. I look forward to doing a lot more builds with a lot more of your amazing community members in the near future. We'll see you next time.